So hand drawing certainly doesn't play the role in architectural processes that it did a generation ago, but it's still very, very relevant. And it's really well suited to capturing ideas quickly. Tools like AutoCAD and Revit bog you down in units and representation and accuracy. And they're not always great for just getting a record of your thoughts quickly. But when all you have to do is just pick up a pen and start drawing on paper, you're much more likely to capture those ideas. And uh, that being the case, it's much more likely that you'll want to record uh, the results of that drawing process and maybe make it part of your design set of drawings. So in this video, I'm going to take, uh, show you how you can take uh, a rough sketch like this, something that maybe just got sketched on some rough graph paper and refine it. So it's a little bit more fitting of your final drawing set uh, so that you end up with something that maybe looks a little bit more like this. So the final refinement on the image that we want to place on the sheet is going to be done in Adobe Illustrator. But before we get to that, we're going to use another Adobe application called Capture. It's meant to work on your phone or on your tablet, and it uses the camera on those devices to create a vectorized image. So the normal cameras on those devices take a picture that's essentially just a mosaic of pixels. Um, but the Adobe Capture app is meant to create a different type of graphic. And I'll explain exactly what a vector graphic is all about when we actually get into Illustrator. But for now, let's just fire it up and we'll see that when we start this, uh, initially, it looks like a normal type of image. Um, but what I'm going to do here just to create the first shot is I'm going to just click on this little paint palette icon in the upper left. And I'm going to switch over to this little circular icon. And you'll see that it changes it to this high contrast black and white kind of line drawing. You can see that there's a little bit of flickering, though because it's picking up on some of the graph paper lines. And I'm trying to eliminate those to create my refined final sketch. If you're lucky, uh, you can create this image and not have to worry about the second method that I'm going to show you. But most likely, you're going to be uh, picking up on some of those graph paper lines. And you'll have to kind of go with the second method. I'm going to go ahead with this, end, this one anyway, just in case it does work out for you and you don't need to go any further. But you can see that as I move this slider to the right and the dark tones increase, I can see more of the influence of those graph paper lines. And if I go to the other side, uh, I get rid of them, but I also start to lose some of the quality here. Some of the uh, parts of the sketch start to disappear a little bit. So to make this image, I'm going to just go about uh, midway, a little bit to the left, I guess. And when I've got that ready, I'm just going to click on the shutter button, take the picture. And although it looked pretty clean in the uh, first case there, you can see now uh, what it's about to save. You can see that there's, uh, again, too much influence from those graph paper lines. I'm going to save it anyway. And then I'll kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison when we get into Illustrator with this and the second method. Uh, when you're ready to save, you want to just click on the Save button. Uh, actually, sorry, before that, let's do a little cropping. We don't need to have all that kind of background texture and clutter. And we want to just simplify this, keep the file size down, and focus on the essential graphics. So I'll click Save once I've done that. And then the next screen is just going to be confirmation of where it's going to save to. And you can see that this is going to save an SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics file, and I've got this going to my Creative Cloud folder. And within the library, I've got a folder here just called Sketches. So it does require a login. And you do have to have an account with Adobe Creative Cloud. So I'll click on Save. And it'll send that off to the uh, servers where I'll be able to retrieve them then from, of course, the uh, browser Creative Cloud uh, website. And now that I've done that, I'm going to show you the other method here. So the little icon in the upper left, I'll click on that again, that little circular icon. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to this second option, which involves some color scanning. And I just click on that little paint palette icon to bring that up. So now you can see it looks like more like a typical sort of photograph. I've got the introduction here of a little bit of color, some tone. And I want to simplify this so that I can just kind of focus on essential elements and ideally uh, isolate those kind of teal colored graph paper lines and get rid of them in Illustrator. Uh, to simplify what I'm looking at here, I'm going to click on this little magic wand icon. And you'll see that it refers to this as the auto clean. And uh, that might be all I need to do. That actually looks pretty good. I can just basically see black lines, white background, and then those kind of teal colored lines for the graph paper. I'm going to click on this little shutter button with the check mark. And there's a possibility here that I might want to do a little bit of extra editing. There's a little paint palette icon on the lower right. And when I click on that, you'll see that it takes me to another screen here where I can then just use a slider to further simplify the way that it's represented this sketch. I don't want to go too far to the left because then it starts to lose the color. But let's just say that's about right. When I've got that set up, I'll click Done. I'm going to click Crop so I can just reduce the file size just like I did in the last step. 
and get rid of the background clutter and texture and just kind of focus on about that much information. I'll click save. It'll run me through the same process again. And you'll see the confirmation of where it's going to be saved, what format it's going to be saved to. And then I'll click save. And it's sent off to the servers and I'll be able to retrieve it using my browser. I've noticed it tends to take a couple minutes. So just give it a little, uh, a little while to upload and then it'll be retrievable by way of the browser. We'll kind of see those steps in a minute here. And ultimately we'll open it up in Illustrator and we'll take a look at uh, what's left on refining it. So with the scanning out of the way, we now want to go to creativecloud.adobe.com and retrieve our images. So if we log into that site, we'll be able to access our work with this little option here at the top. Uh, once we've clicked on your work, uh, you'll be able to then see libraries over here. So your libraries are on the upper left. And then uh, having clicked on that, we'll be able to access the folder that we stored our scans in, which in my case was called sketches. And uh, we'll be able to see all of the recent sketches and this is my black and white sketch and this is my color sketch and to retrieve them we just have to click over here on this little three dot button select download and then we'll just make sure that we keep it in svg format pdf actually works as well but we'll just keep it in svg uh, i would click here to download i've already done that so i'm just going to go to illustrator and just show you what it looks like when we open those up so in adobe illustrator i want to just do a basic open i'll navigate to where those svg files are so I've got my color scan and my black and white scan. I've already downloaded them and renamed them. And I'll click open. And um, we're going to spend a little bit of time in the black and white scan, but uh, we want to do the refinement in the color scan. So I, I'll just kind of talk about why the black and white scan doesn't work very well. And then I'll elaborate on what we will do to clean things up and also talk about what vector graphics are all about. So here's the black and white scan. You can see lots of remaining artifacts from the uh, graph paper. So we don't want that. We also ended up with a lot of gaps here and kind of erosion of the sketch lines. So those are things that can be cleaned up, but it would be a very tedious process to do that. So we're not going to go any further with this one. We'll close it and then we'll look here at our color scan. Just so we can kind of see it a little bit more clearly, uh, we're going to hit Control A and select Object, Transform and Rotate just so we can properly orient it. And uh, we'll just do a 90 degree rotate here to bring it back to what it should look like. And you can see here that the color scan worked quite well as a result of the settings that we used uh, in the app on our phones. And if I zoom in, you'll be able to see that we've basically just got two colors. Uh, we actually have a third because it made shapes out of the white empty spaces. But uh, essentially, we've just got the gray sketch lines and then we've got these kind of greenish graph paper lines, which means it's going to be really easy to get rid of what we don't want and be left with just the basic sketch lines. So the process is quite simple. We just click on whatever we don't want. In this case, these empty white kind of squares. And then we select this select tool. And on that, we go down to same and we choose fill color and it'll choose all of the similar sort of white solid objects. And once they're selected, we can just hit delete to get rid of them. We'll repeat the process here for the graph paper lines. So once again, just select any of them. They're all kind of blended and linked together like this, but uh, we just have to once again choose select and same and then choose fill color and once they're all selected we can hit delete and now you'll see that the graphic looks much more cleaned up and this was kind of the finished product that we were pursuing so with it simplified i'll kind of point out what we've gained here uh, with this whole process and why vector graphics are, are a real advantage at this point if i had just used my camera and taken a picture of the sketch like this uh, what I would have gotten, of course, would have been just a mosaic of pixels. I, I can only see those pixels if I zoom in real close. But um, what that means is it's going to be really hard to select all of the green graph paper line pixels. And then you can see that I've also got the introduction of a whole bunch of kind of modeled uh, pixels here, indicating some texture and some shading and a whole bunch of other complexity, which is going to make it really hard to focus on just the sketch lines. So. That's one of the big advantages of this process is I've managed to just select those and I can now feature those on a sheet and they look nice and refined and cleaned up and I would have lost all the unnecessary focus on all the additional elements and clutter in that photograph. Uh, the other major advantage here is that you'll notice if I zoom in, I don't see any of that mosaic of, uh, of pixels. And what that means is that I'm going to be free to set this to be whatever size I want on the sheet. Uh, with a regular photograph, I'm kind of bound. I have to keep it fairly small because if I make it too large, then I see the illusion of all those pixels uh, shattered. And then, of course, I see all the noise and, and, and artifacts. So 
This just allows me to display my original sketch uh, in a nice, simplified, uh, really, really basic uh, looking graphic. So that might be all I need. Uh, that might be as far as I want to go. If I really want to just represent the sketch in its most basic form, uh, at this point, I could just do File, Save As, and change the type down below here from SVG to PDF. And that would be a format, of course, that most programs like AutoCAD or Revit would recognize. It would make me easy. It would make it very easy to place those on a sheet, and uh, the process would be complete. Um, but there are some other options that I have for refining this graphic, and uh, I'll just close this window and we'll look at what those. So the further refinement initially involves a very important tool in Illustrator called the Blob Brush tool, and it's located up here on the upper left underneath the Paintbrush tool. And it allows me to just basically paint and uh, create some vector shapes to fill in gaps like these. So when I was doing the scanning process, I was left with some gaps in the trees here and on the ground. Um, perhaps I want to leave them that way. Uh, but if I want to kind of fill in and uh, create a more complete looking sketch, and also more importantly, set myself up for a little bit of color filling later on, I need to fill those in. And the blob brush tool is a really good way to do that. Uh, the first thing I have to do is just set the right color so that the, uh, the brush will paint the color that matches the sketch lines. Notice that I've still got this leftover graph paper line color here. And to fix that, I just have to click on my eyedropper tool, select on uh, any of the graph, uh, the sketch lines, and then you'll see that it matches. And now I'm set to draw with my paintbrush tool. So the way this works, it's really quite straightforward. Uh, I would just zoom in here and then I would just make a click and I would drag my cursor across. I'm not worried, of course, about having nice, straight, tidy lines that would look out of place with the rest of the sketch lines. Um, I can also change the size of the brush by just clicking on my square bracket tools. So next to the P key on your keyboard, if you just hit the left one to reduce the size of the brush or the right one to increase the size of the brush, you'll be able to get whatever size you need and fill in these gaps. So I'm going to pause here and then just do that little bit of sketching and I'll come back with the finished product in a minute. So there's the finished result. Uh, I've used the blob brush tool to fill in the gaps and uh, I've got all the detail that I need. And what I'm looking for at this point is uh, a condition, I guess, similar to what you would do in AutoCAD when you were setting up a hatch. You'd want to make sure that you had some closed boundaries and that will create some fill regions that Illustrator can use to add some additional colors. So what I'm going to do to set that process up is I'm first going to name this layer. So on my Layers Manager, uh, in my case, it's in the upper right. If you don't see your Layers tab, just click on Window and make sure Layers is selected. First thing I'm going to do is just give this layer a name. I'll just double click on this text. And instead of Contours, I'll call this the, uh, let's say, Original Lines. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click and hold down that layer title drag down to the bottom of my layer tool or my layer window and just hover over this little symbol at the bottom that shows the square with the plus symbol. When I release, it's going to make a copy of that layer. And then I'm going to just add a, a new name to that new layer. So instead of original lines copy, I'm going to double click and I'm going to call this uh, colored shapes. And I'm doing that because I want to keep the original version of the simplified line work in the uh, basic layer. And I want to have the ability to do some changes here and come back to that original should I not like what I generate in this next set of steps. So really simple. All I'm going to do now is just hit Control A and that will select all of my sketch lines. And then I'm going to go to Object and drop down to Live Paint and just slide over to Make. And you'll see a slightly different graphic here around the perimeter uh, of the set of sketch lines. And that's just an indication that th this is now set for a live paint. And what that means is that if I just go now to my window tab and drop down to swatches, I'll be able to see this little window appear. And on it, I can then click on this little stack of three lines in the upper right, drop down to open swatch library. And I'll just use something simple like, for example, default swatches. And I'll choose the first available option here, which is art and illustration. So these little sample colors now will allow me to just choose a color and then fill in that color within each of these boundaries on my sketch. So uh, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to pause for a second so I can get this window out of the way. Okay, and I'll select a sample color. I'm not really worried about getting the exact right color. Obviously, you'd want to have a few more options than what's shown here. 
But uh, just to kind of start the process, I'll just click this kind of bluish color. And then what I want to do is hit the K key on my keyboard. And that will change my cursor to this kind of paint bucket tool. And then I can just click and fill in some color. So I'm going to select everything on the left side here and just uh, populate it with this kind of bluish color. And then I'll choose a different color, maybe this darker blue, and then just do the same thing on the other sides. And I'll choose something even a little bit darker, I guess, for this uh, kind of soffit condition underneath. Uh, I'll do the same thing with the trees. So I can select a greenish color over here on the swatch and then just click on any one of the trees to fill that in. And perhaps I've got a little bit of tree trunk color to fill in as well. So I'll zoom in and just add that extra last little bit. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, the colors are quite basic, but you can see how elaborating on that process would allow you to create some really interesting uh, color compositions. All still kind of at the same time as just kind of maintaining uh, the good qualities of the sketch that you want to preserve. So, um, like I said, you're not stuck with the colors that you chose. Um, after having done that initial sort of color assignment, you can just click on the graphic and notice it all gets kind of selected all at once is the same, same object. Uh, I can then go to Object, Expand, and then just choose uh, OK because it's kind of just by default expand the object in the fill in the stroke. Uh, once that I've done that, I can select the graphic again and now just ungroup these uh, shapes. So I'll click on Object and Ungroup. And usually I have to do this a couple times. So I'm going to click once again on object ungroup. And now you'll notice oh, one more time, I've got object kind of groups within groups here. But now you'll notice that I've got an individual shape here. So I can begin to kind of customize the color and add something a little bit unique like I've just done here. And I can do that with my swatch uh, panel here with these sample colors. Or I can also just double click on this little swatch tile here. And then I'll be able to access my color picker tool and be a little bit more specific about exactly what color it is I want to fill it in that spot. So if I want to go for something uh, a little bit less saturated, a little bit lighter, just select the color here and click OK and you'll see it fill in. So I'm not going to go through a step by step process of setting up whatever those colors might be. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of some completed examples just to kind of explain what the possibilities might be. Before I get to that, though, I want to show you one last thing which is that uh, in addition to solid colors, you can also add in Illustrator what they refer to as patterns. So I can find those on the window tab again. If I click there and drop down to, um, once again, I wanna see patterns. I must have that open already. Uh, actually, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna click on my little swatch window here and drop down to swatch library and choose patterns basic graphics and then I'm just going to choose my basic graphic lines. So now next to my art and illustration sample colors I've got some sample patterns here and this again just kind of mimics what we do in programs like AutoCAD where we assign some hatches and they might have some uh, patterns or some solid colors or some uh, other types of graphics in them. So you've got a lot of possibilities here. You can click on these little uh, arrow uh, to just kind of run through options that are available in the library. And there's a whole bunch of kind of pre-made patterns here that you can assign to the faces of your building. So having said all that, uh, there's lots that you can experiment with, um, but that's the basic process. Uh, I'll just pause here for a second. And as I said, I'll show you some, uh, some completed examples. So I'll start again by just showing you the original sketch. Uh, I've lightened the lines a little bit. And then I've just kind of worked through that process that I just described of using the live paint tools and adding either solid colors or perhaps gradients or patterns to create uh, some variations of this graphic. So this would be just a simple application of some basic gray tones. You can see that I've added some radial gradients in the trees. And uh, next, I decided to incorporate some patterns. So I played around with, it, uh, with those different patterns from the library and created something that looks like this. And below that, then I played around with some colors, some rather bold ones in this case, but uh, just again to kind of show you the possibilities. And last, I developed this one, which involved some gradients and some colors. And you can see that I introduced a little bit of line work here as well. So lots of interesting possibilities just to refine and expound on the idea of this uh, initial sketch. So, um, you can go for something simple like what's shown here with our basic black lines, uh, or you can elaborate here and use some of the gradient tools and other color fill tools. 
Um, what I've done here with this last one, and this is the one that I'll just put on the sheet uh, back in Revit, is I've added some uh, drop shadow to the lines, and then I've used another set of uh, pattern tools here just to kind of fill in what you see underneath. So lots of variation there. Remember, it all started off this way. So you can see here how you give yourself a lot more options uh, when you use these tools, and you're not stuck with this just kind of typical approach, which would be to just take a picture of a sketch and place it on the sheet. Okay. So for the last step here, we're just going to jump into Revit. And you can see here that I've already, already placed some of these uh, on my title block. And it's a simple process. You just click here on Insert. And then you either select, of course, if it was just this image here photographed, I would just use uh, Import Image. Uh, but because I've been building these in Illustrator as vector files, uh, I'll select Import PDF. And there's one important thing I need to point out here. Uh, this might seem a little counterintuitive after what we've just described. But in Revit, when you click Import PDF and find your image, and I'll just select my final, uh, let's see, which one was it? My final vector sketch. I'll click Open, and you're going to see this window here that asks you at what resolution you want to bring this in. So it's a little unfortunate that Revit doesn't recognize the vector format and allow us to just work with that on the sheet. But it does make this last little conversion and brings it back into pixelated or raster format, which is a little unfortunate again. Um, but the good thing is, is that we can actually select our resolution and crank this right up to something really high if we like. So instead of just having a small, tiny little 72 dot per inch graphic, we can crank this all the way up to 600 dots per inch. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Be aware, though, that when you do this, you are going to increase the file size. It's going to take a larger file to create a nice large 600 dot per inch graphic. Um, so it can make your machine bog down a little bit, but it won't be anything too drastic. So we'll choose 600 DPI, we'll click OK, and now you're going to see after it thinks a little bit, it's going to bring in this really nice large image. And we'll have the ability to use these grips and just kind of drag it out to whatever size we want. And uh, you can see here that on this sheet, which is an A1 sheet, I can display that sketch at a very large size. I'm not stuck with that mosaic of pixels that I was stuck with from the original photograph here. Uh, I've got the ability to display this at a larger size. And you can see that if I zoom in on this, eventually I will see the pixels, but I have to zoom in quite a ways to get that. So it's a really nice way to take all the good character and quality of that original sketch, uh, that graphic that allowed you to capture the initial thought and inspiration and display it uh, in a way on your final sheets that looks much more refined. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of that or where we can refine that process a little bit. Um, appreciate you watching. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. And we'll see you in later videos.